Okay, let us discuss the next problem. So you first draw this given figure. I am waiting for one minute, you just draw the figure and then we will discuss the problem. So you see, uh, this this is a point A. So a light ray is going from point A to here, and this is a basically interface between two medium. This side you have medium one, and this side you have medium two. So there are two medium. So light ray basically comes at the surface, and then it gets refracted in the medium two. So angle of incidence is theta one and the angle of refraction that is given that is theta 2 and the height of point 1 from the this surface is h1 and the height of point 2 or point b basically is h2 and the horizontal distance between point a and b that is given that is l and if you draw a perpendicular from this surface point the section point this distance horizontal is x if this distance is l so this distance is l minus x this height is given that is h2, this height is h1. So let me read the problem. A ray of light goes from point A in a medium in which the speed of light is v1. So in this medium a speed of light is v1. To a point B in which the speed of light is v2. So in this medium light speed is v2. The ray strikes the interface a horizontal distance x to the right of point A. So this horizontal distance is given x so that the time required from going A to B is given by so you find time required so now in this medium what is the distance travel so this distance is H1 this distance is X so let us put this point is O so now I can say so time required to travel from A to O or let us call this the T1 this is nothing but distance so this distance is H1 square plus X square root so root over h1 square plus x square divided by c. Now this term is not c because velocity is v1 and in this medium velocity is v2. So let us write this velocity is v1. So velocity of light is not constant. Now the time required from O to B. So this is the time from A to O. Now time required O to B. Let us call this time is T2. Now this distance is L minus x this distance is h2 so this distance is h2 square plus l minus x square under root so h2 square plus are you able to see or not okay let me write something like this now you will be able to see l minus x whole square divided by now in this medium velocity is v2 so i can write total time is t1 plus t2 that is root over h1 square plus x square by v1 plus h2 square plus l minus x whole square divided by v2. Now the problem says uh, prove a snail's law using dt by dx is equals to 0. So you have to prove the snail's law. Now you apply the Fermat principle of minimum time. So if I apply the Fermat principle of minimum time, Fermat principle of minimum time, so if I apply this thing, this law says light ray choose a path that will have minimum time. Now this case, x is a variable. You see time is a function of x. So this means time will be minimum. What will be the condition? So condition will be dt by dx should be equal to 0. So this is the required mathematical condition. So now if I differentiate this equation dt by dx. So this becomes. Now this is 1 by v1. So I can write 1 by 2 v1 under root h1 square plus x square. And x square will have differentiation of 2x. Now, uh, with second one, I can write this is 1 by v2. And now 1 by x is 2 times. 
under root h2 a square plus l minus x whole a square and then I have to differentiate 2 into L minus X and then I have to multiply this by minus 1. Now this is the time derivative with respect to X and this time has to be minimum. Now you see this is equals to 0. Some people may be thinking that why not we are doing DX by DT. DX by DT we cannot do because X is fixed. X is changing only for so time change if you change the x so this means you see here if time changes if you change the x so for a given time x is basically I'm not changing x with respect to time that is important point I'm changing t if I change the x so I have to take differentiate differentiation with respect to x so now you don't have to take a differentiation here dx dx by dt we are differentiating with respect to x and that's why after I have to take a differentiation dx by dx that is 1 now if I put this is equals to 0 so this becomes x by under root h1 square plus x square v1 and this side I will have now this goes that side 2 to cancel out so simply I will have 1 by v2 l minus x under root h2 a square plus l minus x whole a square now you know so if you see okay uh, just write it out now see x y h1 a square plus x a square is what did you remember this is sine theta 1 so you see this distance is x1 x this distance is so this x now this angle is theta 1 so this or you can even see this triangle x divided by this so x divided by this distance is sine theta 1 <coughs> sorry so 1 by v1 into sine theta 1 this is equals to 1 by v2 if you see that triangle will find this is sine theta 2 so you see this distance is l minus x1 so this distance is l minus x1 and this distance is uh, that is in the denominator so this is sine theta 2 verify yourself so now I can see v2 into sine theta 1 so I can have somewhere like this v2 into sine theta 1 is equals to v1 into sine theta 2 and this is nothing but this is a snail's law so, if you define a refractive index V2 by V, uh, you can always uh, say, let, let us say medium 1 is vacuum. So, a speed of light that is V1 is equals to C. So, this becomes V2 by C into sin theta 1 is equals to sin theta 2. Or you can do in another way also. So, what you have done is, uh, you have basically multiplied by both sides by C. So let us do that one. So let us remove this one. Now take this as equation 1. So let us say this as equation 1. So equation 1 is C by V1. If I multiply both sides by C, so C by V1 sin theta 1, C by V2 sin theta 2. So this becomes, so let me take another page. So, so it becomes C by V1 sin theta 1 is equals to C by V2 sin theta 2. Now, you see C by V1 is what? Refractive index. This is nothing but refractive index. C is always greater than V1. So, C by V1 is refractive index N1 into sin theta 1 this is equal to t by v2 is n2 into sin theta 2 now this is nothing but this is law of reflection refraction so law of refraction now you see you just uh, copy it out so let me see if you are not able to see the last page so let us see this is the this is the thing so you can copy it out if you need by the way you can do your own also because things are very easy 
Now these are basically law of reflection you can prove using the Fermat principle of less time. So you can prove law of reflection, law of refraction using the Fermat principle of less time. This is important. There are many things that can be proved using the Fermat principle of less time. You can in you can also solve some question related to maximum in wine mathematics using the Fermat principle. In Fermat principle you have to see the symmetry also. In some cases you will have in mathematics you will have some maximum minimum problem where you can apply the something like this you have a river one person is going from one point to another point I don't remember that kind of question you can find here there also you can apply the Fermat principle of list time. So using the Fermat principle of list time we can prove law of reflection, law of refraction. Even though these laws are not very important for examination point of view, but this gives a good idea of subject. How can we deal with the subject of optics with a very easy easy uh, equations and then differentiating we can derive. Basically a Snell's law, law of refraction and refraction can also be proven using uh, Huygens Babe principle also. So we will prove that also using a Babe theory. We will discuss the next problem. You just copy it out. Uh, are you able to copy or not? So if you are not able to copy just make a, a stop button and then you copy and then you go for the next problem. Okay.